Hello everyone, it's Richard here. This is a quick video to tell you a bit more about printing the steampunk octopus that I did with my daughter a little while ago. I had some questions about the print and especially on the support removal because I used a fair bit of support material. Uh, this was also printed in PLA which is quite a tricky uh, plastic to remove support material from. So PLA printing the support material on top of PLA can be quite tricky to remove. So if we just remind ourselves of the size of the steampunk octopus. It's this little fella here. So he's a wonderful model and um, I'll put the link in the description up onto Thingiverse of where you can get this model. There's a various different octopus bodies you can use and this is the steampunk version. Uh, it's probably one of the harder ones to print because it's got quite a bit of overhangs, especially at the back here where you need to support all of those sections quite well. But it was a bit of a, uh, an experiment that I was doing with my daughter to print lots of parts um, and in different infill settings and with different support materials to really experiment a little bit more about the limitations with 3D printing and show her a bit about uh, some of the problems you can, you can face. Uh, and I also made quite a few mistakes with this one. Uh, this was a 27 hour print, this, this main body of this, uh, of this steampunk octopus. So I had to set up the support structure and generated it and actually I made a couple of tiny errors which made it a little bit hard to remove. So that caused me problems later on when I was hoping my daughter would be able to remove the supports but actually I ended up having to do it because they were very tough and the interface layer between the final bit of support material and the actual model was just a little bit too tight so they were just a bit bonded. PLA as well as I said is very is it really wants to bind together and to fuse so even if you have uh, that interface layer correct it doesn't really peel away you sort of still have to break it off and you get a few little scar marks on the bottom here which you can you can get rid of with a tiny bit of sanding and I actually use a small blowtorch on the bottom to actually polish up any unsmooth sections of PLA after the uh, uh, printing. So it was quite interesting and anyway we printed quite a lot of these sections on a couple of different printers with different support materials uh, and more, more just to, to experiment with the, the limitations, finding out the limitations and showing my daughter a little bit more about the printing, 3D printing process some of the trickier parts which is the support structures and support removal. So I'll give you a time lapse of me taking the support structure off directly after this uh, introduction and you'll see that it's actually quite a tricky process. The support, the support material itself was quite well, quite well done, it broke off quite nicely in, into these multiple sections but every now and again you get a really sharp piece that just snaps off and sort of flies across the room so if you're especially with PLA if you're doing any type of support removal I can definitely recommend having eye protective gear or just just some glasses to stop any bits from uh, flying around I can still find little pieces lying around on the desk where they just must have sprung off when they were being removed and it can be quite quite sharp and painful if it hits you and could cause some damage so just be a bit aware of that this really is an, an example of why we need to spend a bit more time working with support structures, learning how to tune them so they're just weak enough to support but that they can be printed and that they provide enough support but can be peeled away or, or chiseled away if you have to but hopefully peeled away or, or melted away. Some of the soluble support materials now are really nice to use. So the days of using the same material for the object and the support structure hopefully are becoming a bit behind us. There's still a lot of work to do, um, but hopefully we're going to move forward with 3D printing, desktop 3D printing, and get to the point where it's a little bit easier to print some more of these difficult organic or impossible objects. That at the moment, uh, a lot of structures are created for 3D printing, so you'll find they have not too much overhangs, you don't need to use support materials, and where you do need to use support, it's maybe just a few pillars or just a, a little bit. Certainly with this steampunk octopus he was a real challenge and uh, he's, a, he's a great one to push yourself and to make yourself tune your support materials a lot better. I learned a lot from this and um, so did my daughter. One of the things was when we started printing out the segments, because there was a lot of these segments, 
we use support material inside and at the back on this back piece here that can be peeled off and after a while we slowly sort of started removing all of this support there's a little bit of support at the top here and in the end we ended up using no support material at all to print all of these segments so the ball can be print can printed completely smoothly without any support and um, it just it just works so if you as long as you've got your cooling 360 degree cooling correct and you're not printing too fast you're not laying down too hot you can actually get this without any curling up or any problems at all so that was quite an interesting experiment to go from the different ways to print these little individual te tentacle segments we had so many to print that we could just keep on practicing and, and tuning um, and it actually helped me tune my simplify 3d settings as well which uh, finally forced me to actually do it for the different materials that we were using so I'll leave you with the time lapse of me taking all the support material off and then my daughter's assembling the unit together and if you wonder what she's doing with the blowtorch well it's not sorry uh, not a blowtorch the heat gun uh, you can use a blowtorch but for safety I, I let her use the heat gun which is still 1.6 kilowatts of heat you don't need that much you can do it with a hairdryer but all she's doing is warming up these segments so they push nice and easy together um, so that's towards the end of the of the video, but you'll see her just sort of warming them up with the heat gun and pushing them together. It's thermoplastic, so that's absolutely great. And you can do it with a hairdryer. With PLA, you can do it with a hairdryer. Some other plastics, you need to use a little bit more heat. So hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, especially about support materials, uh, interface layers, and just generally trying to tune them for your printer, then feel free to uh, ask them, and I'll do my very best to help. Uh, with those questions. So thanks ever so much. Hope you enjoy the time lapses and see you next time.
done the last one. And gotta get them onto the main body now then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Final tentacle! Yay! Probably give it a little bit of a blow. Okay, that's done. See how to <laughs> Turn it up then. Oh wow. What a monster. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's a real monster. That's that fantastic. So cool. What are you going to call him? Um, Steve. Excellent. <laughs> Steampunk Steve. Okay, so Steve the octopus is finished. What do you think you might change next time if we made this again? Um, I don't know. I think I'd probably make the le well tentacles a bit shorter. Yeah. But otherwise, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> you like the colour? Yeah. It's quite cool being in different colours, isn't it? Yeah, silver, bronze, white, brown. It's really nice. <laughs> cool. Brilliant. Well done. Another one finished. Yep. Yeah.